What if I told you that within my lifetime we will witness a disaster of epic proportions, one which will see entire cities destroyed, lower hut engulfed by seawater, Dunedin wiped off the map, Carpety Coast annihilated, hundreds of innocent lives stolen while thousands are displaced and left homeless. A disaster that will change the face of Aotearoa forever. This dystopian future is in fact our reality and it is a lot closer than most of us choose to believe. The cause of this catastrophe, you ask? Climate change. Climate change is the most prevalent issue we face today according to a World Economic Forum survey. Although New Zealand only contributes 0.17% to global emissions, per capita, we are ranked the seventh worst in the world. What can we do to stop the spread of global warming before it is too late? Well, I have the solution to our problem that will ensure New Zealand is a world leader on fighting climate change. Solar roads. Solar roads are effectively specially engineered solar panels which have been designed to replace the asphalt currently used on our roadways. Regular solar farms take up large amounts of space, meaning land is unavailable for other economic purposes. Solar roads, on the other hand, utilise the vast roadway network which interconnects all parts of Aotearoa and makes it dual purpose. So, as well as being able to drive on it, we can also utilise this space to generate clean energy. So, how do they work? Solar roads are comprised of three layers. Firstly, a layer of insulation running along the ground, which is topped by a layer of photovoltaic cells, PVCs. The PVCs are protected by a layer of tempered glass to stop the cells from getting damaged, yet still allow the sun's rays to reach them. The purpose of the lower layer of insulation is to safeguard the cells from below and provide a stable base. The inner workings of the middle layer of the road are the same as in a regular solar panel. The PVCs are primarily made from silicon, which demonstrates the photoelectric effect. They are comprised of two layers. The outermost N-type layer, which has been specially treated to be slightly negative, and the lower P-type layer, which has been treated to be slightly positive. As a result, when photons from the sun's rays hit the road, electrons in the outermost atoms of silicon become excited by this energy and are knocked off their atoms. These free electrons then move to the lower layer of silicon and through a circuit to harness the energy produced. This energy is then transported via wires to be used by local infrastructure or stored in the grid. Now, you'd think that driving on glass would result in cars slipping and sliding all over the place. But in fact, the top layer of tempered glass is specially textured to meet the same standards for traction as traditional roads. The textured glass can allow a car travelling up to 130 kilometres an hour to stop within the same braking distance as on an asphalt road, even in wet conditions. The tempered glass is also extremely strong and can withstand weights of up to 113 tonnes, so it would easily be able to manage New Zealand's heaviest trucks. By covering our roadways with solar panels, not only do we harness the space to transform the sun's rays into renewable energy, we also unlock a whole world of possibilities. Firstly, the electricity generated by the road will be used to charge nearby street lamps, businesses and homes via cables under the road and any surplus will be fed into the grid. Solar roads can allow us to melt snow and ice in winter through diverting some of its power to heating components, 
saving both the money used to de-ice the roads and the injuries and damages which occur due to icy driving conditions. Additionally, embedded LEDs and a microprocessor, which is basically a mini computer, added into the road can allow road markings and warning signs to be displayed. These can be remotely altered and even flash when unexplained weight is sensed. For example, a child running out, a landslide, or livestock escaped from nearby paddocks. Most importantly, however, electric cars will be able to charge as they are driving through simple mutual induction technology, where a changing magnetic field in a coil in the road will result in a current being induced in the electric car and therefore charge it. In the future, there is even the potential to use the microprocessors to provide accurate location data for autonomous vehicles, rather than relying on GPS. Now, this may seem like a distant dream. However, this is technology we can employ right now. Countries like China, France, the Netherlands, and the US are all developing their very own solar roads as we speak. The Netherlands were the first nation to reimagine the application of solar panels, opening a solar panel bike path in 2015. France wasn't far behind and implemented a one kilometre stretch through the village of Turuvro, Perche, Normandy. Jinan, China has recently unveiled the world's first solar highway, and the US are currently refining their technology on car parks and commercial areas. If New Zealand were to introduce solar roads, the benefits would be monumental. Economically, although there is a significant cost in building the road, the financial return far outweighs this. To introduce one kilometre of road on a two-lane street would cost $3.82 million and would be expected to last 15 to 20 years. I know it does seem an exorbitant cost, but bear with me. The one kilometre stretch of road would produce one million kilowatts of solar energy per year. Selling this energy at the commercial rate of 28.79 cents per kilowatt would result in a whopping $287,900 per annum. At this rate, more than $500,000 profit would be generated over the 15-year lifespan. This may sound insignificant, however, the return on 100 kilometres of solar roads would be in excess of $50 million, over and above the roads paying for themselves. Not only this, but as technology advances and manufacturers compete to fill the demand, the cost of the roads will become cheaper. Environmentally, the energy sector comprising of power and transport currently produces 42% of our emissions. By introducing solar roads, we can drastically reduce these emissions. In terms of power, New Zealand's energy can increase from 80% to 100% renewable, purely from turning all 11,000 kilometres of our state highways into solar roads. In terms of transport, most consumers indicated in a QUT study that the main barrier stopping them from purchasing electric vehicles is the limited range per charge and inconvenience of charging them, meaning you can only travel up to 200 kilometres before having to stop for up to an hour to charge the car. Solar roads, however, eliminates these barriers, making it far more feasible for New Zealanders to make the switch from our gas-guzzling vehicles to EVs, thereby virtually eradicating emissions in the transport sector. In terms of well-being, if we do not take action to drastically reduce our emissions, the effects on our health will be severe. The New Zealand College of Public Health Medicine has indicated that there will be an increase in mental health problems and suicidalness amongst Kiwis due to stress from loss of livelihood, disruption to communities and extreme weather events. Not only will climate change affect our well-being, but it is expected that due to decreased water and air quality, increased temperatures and the onset of tropical diseases to which we have little resistance, New Zealanders will see a degradation in our physical health. 
The only way to halt these detrimental effects is to drastically reduce our emissions. A feat solar roads will achieve. We can no longer take a back seat as global warming devastates our planet. In the words of Barack Obama, climate change is no longer some far off problem. It is happening here, it is happening now. New Zealand must step up as a world leader in this fight by introducing solar roads. This revolutionary technology will dramatically decrease our emissions, helping to stop the threat global warming poses to our future. Solar roads are the end of the road for fossil fuels. Um, we've already largely got ourselves running on renewable energy, haven't we? Yeah, so we're already at 80%. However, we do still have a significant amount to go. You know, we've still got a fifth of our energy that is being produced from non-renewable sources. And by implementing solar roads, we can get that up to the 100%. It seems like kind of a really expensive and clunky way to get our renewable energy use up. I mean, for example, if you're going to argue for the road, the solar road, to obviate the need for pesky recharging points for e vehicles, you'll need an awful lot of solar road, right? Yep, so by having it on the state highways, obviously your EVs on a full charge, an average one can already travel up to 200 kilometres. So if you're just pottering around town all day going to work and back, you wouldn't really need it to be charging as you're driving. However, on your long haul trips, you know, from Wellington to Auckland, of course you're going to have to make a significant number of stops along the way to charge your car. Until they improve the battery. And yeah. they won't improve the battery and the solar is going to be a bit of a waste of time. Yep, however, the batteries aren't expected to improve for another 10 years, and in another 10 years, our emissions will have significantly increased. And after that, once the batteries have improved, you've still got to get people buying the cars. And so by having the solar roads, not only is it an expensive way to increase our emissions, but they are cost effective. You do see a return on your costs. It is a significant um, investment, but that money is returned, and they do provide a whole number of other benefits. Have you done your carbon footprint measurements on the manufacturer, the constituents of the solar roads? Yep, so I haven't fully done that, however I did look into it and the glass manufacturing isn't too severe, you know, the glass bottles and that if you use them like three times then you've offset the carbon emissions from them as opposed to a plastic bottle. The PVCs aren't too um, carbon intensive I suppose. And so, yeah, that wouldn't, that's not a significant thing as opposed to a road that will last 15 years and is producing 1 million kilowatts of renewable energy for each of those years. And would you have to wash it constantly? No, so although the road is textured, there isn't really anywhere for, you know, the dirt and that to get into other than what we see on a regular road. And so obviously, yes... Well, we don't see the dirt on a regular road, we don't notice it. Yeah. So I do understand what you're saying in terms of the light getting in and through to it. However, when we think of New Zealand with our considerable amounts of rain that we see, that really just wouldn't be an issue that we'd see. Thanks, <laughs> Oh, thank you.